Greetings my fellow YouTubers and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to y'all as the Big D. So, since I'm putting the rest of my redos of the 2010's Flix Rankings on a slight hiatus for now, I mentioned I'm going to put in their place special rankings. Now, my good friend Robbie from Ogre Boy 1992. He actually did some pretty special ones. His favorite superhero movies from, from the year since he was born. Well, by a decade, that is. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick superhero flicks from each decade from since I've been born. And I've confirmed 10. I didn't write them down, but I have confirmed 10 that I think are, well, well pretty good in some ways. So... <sighs> Because I was born in, 19, in the 1980s, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this ranking to you. So, I do hope you enjoy it. There are some you may not be too thrilled with. So, before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and give a couple of honorable mentions. Well, even though I'm not really going to include this, because it's okay in some parts. Superman 3, and the other would be... Let me see if I... Let me Oh yeah, Masters of the Universe. Now, you will see He-Man on this list, but it'll, but of course it'll be the animated one, though. But anyway, let's get started with my favorite superhero flicks of the 1980s. Coming in at number 10 is... This one might give me controversy, and that would be Supergirl from 1984. Now, although I rarely have seen this movie, I do recall seeing this years ago, and I might have seen it again maybe a few years back, but it's been a long time since I've last seen this movie. I The only thing I can mostly remember of is Helen Slater, who plays the title character. I mean, she absolutely looks very charming as the title character, but now, although I'm mostly more on the Supergirl TV series with Melissa Benoist as the title character, who looks absolutely adorbs, with or without the skirt, as, of course, you know they ditched the skirt for the current season, which, hey, I was cool with that. Supergirl looks, well, pretty good, but I need to... Get in and rewatch this. This is a movie I need to defend. This movie may have gotten heavily dissed and what have you. Aside, well, and it got more heavily dissed than Superman 3 did. But anyway, this recently turned 35 and it also featured, a, well, a good cast. They include Faye Dunaway, Mia Farrow, Pierre O'Toole, heck, even Mark McClure, who well, plays Jimmy Olsen, who, of course, he played in the Superman quadrilogy of films with Christopher Reeve. Now, you will see one movie, and before you say it, no, it ain't number four, The Quest for Peace. That is definitely not on here, okay? So, anyway, Supergirl is number ten, okay, and the number nine is... The Adventures of the American Rabbit from 1986. Now, I have seen this one time. I did see the preview of it long ago, but never have seen it. But anyway, this is easily a very underrated anime movie directed by Fred Wolf. You know, the same guy who would later go on to bring us the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated series the following year. And actually, it featured... Barry Gordon, who would go on to voice Donatello originally for most of the series run as the voice of the title character. Let's see now. And it also featured lots of other voice actors I'm familiar with, including Pat Fraley, Ken Mars, Rusty Taylor, Hal Smith, and Lorenzo Music even, plus a lot of others. Now... Apparently, it's about this rabbit who apparently, just after his birth, his parents and friends welcome him into the world, but a mysterious old rabbit who walks with a cane greets him and disappears, and the old rabbit shows up a few more times throughout his childhood, always disappearing after making comments and inquiries about his talent and attitude. Well, one day... 
parents become endangered by a falling boulder, and he sprints towards them and changes into a striped Star Spangled superhero on golden roller skates. Yep. Now, of course, this was kind of spun up from coloring books and other books that I've actually recalled seeing, as a matter of fact. Well, that, well, not just that, but um, posters as well, created by pop artist Stuart Muskowitz. I'd say, give it maybe one try. You may like it this, or you may not. That just depends. You be the judge. Anyway, The Adventures of the American Rabbit is number nine, and number eight is Condor Man from 1981. Now, this is another underrated movie. This is from Disney. Now, that's been, I have not seen it so long time. I've seen it twice, but that's been a few years back on the Encore channel, and it's about this comic book illustrator who attempts to assist in the defection of a female Soviet KGB agent. Yeah. But anyway. Well, he demands a sense of realism for his comic book hero, Condor Man. To the point where he crafts a flying suit of his own. And in the intro, he launches himself off the Eiffel Tower and... And it fails. <laughs> anyway, yeah. This course is easily pre-underrated, so... I'd say you may want to give this a check out. I'm not sure if it's on Disney Plus, though. You can look, though, but... I don't know, actually. But anyway... So, in other words, it's kind of about, kind of like a James Bond slash superhero flick rolled into one. Because this guy is dressed in a trench coat like an actual spy type guy. Yeah, really funny. So, anyway, I think Condor Man's pretty underrated. And, uh, anyway, so, so, and that's number eight. And, let's see now... Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to use my source here to give me the heads up. And number seven is Swamp Dang from 1982. Although I've only seen this once. It's based on the Virgo DC Comics character of the same name. Of course, it was directed by Wes Craven before he even did Nightmare on Elm Street. Of course, this is about... The story of scientist Alec Holland, who's played by Ray Wise, and becomes transformed into the monster known as the Swamp Thing, through laboratory sabotage orchestrated by the evil Anton Arcane. And he later helps a woman named Alice Cable, played by Adrian Barbeau, who most people know are from TV's Mod and lots of other movies and TV series, and Bowser's the man responsible for it all. But anyway, I'll have to rewatch this sometime if I ever encounter it. I have not seen the sequel, though, which is The Return of Swamp Thing from 1989. I think it's up somewhere. I'll look into it. But anyway, I also have seen the 90s TV series, but I've never... But since I don't have DC Universe, I've not seen the more recent, now defunct Swamp Thing series they gave us not so long ago. So, anyway, I think Swamp Thing's pretty underrated, but it's pretty good. From what I saw of it, anyway. Anyway, that's actually number... Number seven. Number six is... The Toxic Avenger from 1984. Now, I have seen this twice... I think it's pretty good from the Trauma Corporation. Yeah, because they were that company known for producing low budget B movies with campy concepts and gruesome violence. Anyway, I gotta say, it has become a cult classic, and of course, you know that I did like. 
Oh, Toxie, the Toxic Avenger, I like to call him that. And of course, it was this nerdy dude named Melvin Ferd the Third. He was bullied so much, and he falls into this uh, vat of toxic waste, and thus he is messed up big time. And is reborn as the Toxic Avenger. And so he becomes friends with this blind chick, Sarah, who is absolutely pretty cute. Anyway, I have not seen the sequels, though, unfortunately. I wanted to. I've seen, well, tidbits of the cartoon series Toxic Crusaders as well. But I haven't watched the series, though. Just tidbits. And I used to have an actual Toxie action figure from the Toxic Crusaders cartoon series. Yeah, Toxic Avenger, pretty good movie. It's a cult classic in my book as well. And it's my sixth favorite superhero movie of the 1980s. And next at number five is Brave Star, The Legend. Now, this, of course, is based on the Filmation cartoon series of the same name. It actually came out in 1988, shortly after the the series had finished up running, of course. It's an animated space western, but I consider Brave Star a superhero in a way because he's a space age sheriff who has four animal powers, eyes of the hawk, ears of the wolf, strength of the bear, and speed of the puma. Now, I really loved this movie. It's been a long time since I last watched it, but I need to rewatch it. But anyway, as a kid, I never did... I never did see Brave Star, unfortunately, until 2007 when I encountered it on YouTube after seeing the intro. And when BCI Eclipse released the series, I bought both sets to form the complete 65 episode series run. It's really good, actually. But anyway, Brave Star is easily an, a real underrated A's tune, but I do love it. It tells the story of the original discovery of the mysterious element of a fictional ore called Carrium. Yes. And how Brave Star came up against Tex Hex and his master Stampede. Yeah. And, of course, how he got to meet his allies. Who, of course, um, the lovely J.B. McBride, the judge of New Texas. Fuzz, one of the furry prairie people who becomes his deputy and his big pard, Thirty Thirty, uh, who apparently is a talking horse who can become bipedal and fight on his own, and of course, guys, his big gun, Sarah Jane. Yeah, it's pretty good actually. If you've if you've not seen this, look it up. I think you're gonna enjoy it. If you've never seen Brave Star, you should see the series as well. Anyway, that's. That's about it for that one. Brave Star, the legend. Well, actually, that was originally called that in Europe, but in the U.S., it was Brave Star, the movie, as a matter of fact. So, anyway, that was really good. And that's number five. Number four is He Man She Ra in The Secret of the Sword from 1985, also from Filmation. Now, this was actually released before the She-Ra series premiered, as a matter of fact. It was a compilation of the first five episodes with Meyer Edits made. Uh, yes, so anyway, it's not bad of a movie. I really did enjoy it. Yeah, you know, it originally came out in March of 1985, and this was a waste before She-Ra Princess of Power even premiered, while its predecessor, He-Man, the Masters of the Universe, was still big at the time. But, anyway, when the series came, the story was split into five different parts, but with more footage that, we didn't, that you didn't see in the movie. Now, it's how, um, Prince M, alias He-Man, gets sent through a portal, courtesy of the sorceress of Castle Grayskull, and enters Etheria, where he encounters um, the heroic Archer Bow, who is part of the 
Great Rebellion, and they face off against the evil Horde, who is led by that Force Captain named Adora, who apparently turns out to be the one that Adam's looking for. And, well, soon is revealed that she's Adam's long-lost twin sister, and soon breaks free of the evil Horde's clutches and becomes She-Ra. But anyway, I absolutely think Secret of the Sword is easily a bit underrated, but still, I do love the original Heyman, and I love the original Shira. Of course, I've got both series on DVD, but they're the original BCI Eclipse releases, even though Universal just re-released, well, one whole big set of, the, of both series. Each of those sets do have the movie, so... If you don't have He-Man or She-Ra, check out one of those sets and see The Secret of the Sword. You may like it. Just depends. You be the judge. So anyway, The Secret of the Sword is number four. Number three is Robocop from 1987. Yes, I thought I'd put this in here because this is, in a way, a superhero movie. It's No, it's rated R, but I mean, it's the second R-rated movie, not second. No, wait a minute. Correct, you make that third movie. I'm counting the Toxic Avenger. I'm sure that was rated R2. Yeah, it was. And, of course, Swamp Thing. But this movie's absolutely good. I love it. I will review it sometime. Now, I have seen several of my YouTubers get a special Blu-ray release of this movie from Arrow Video. It looks pretty cool, actually. If I could ever get a Blu-ray player or get my PS3 to play Blu-rays completely, completely, I would get it, and I think I would probably enjoy it. Well, you never can tell. But RoboCop's absolutely good. Peter Weller is absolutely great as the tile character. A uh, cop who gets shot down viciously. Yeah, and I like it when... He he says Robocop going on his first mission at nighttime. Stops this goon at the convenience store, bends the barrel to his gun, and then stops him from robbing these old people. And it's like, Thank you for your cooperation. Good night. And off he goes again. I like the music in this movie too. Paul Verhoeven directed the movie, and it's real good. Now, on his first night out, the second time he goes out to these two thugs who are trying to rape this woman. One t gets her off some of her hair. Robocop appears. Let the woman go. You are under arrest. Then manages to not harm the woman, but aims right through. A shot goes right through her dress and hits this goon in the crotch. Then he goes for the other one. Your move, creep. So anyway, the the whole movie is an absolute fun field blast. Robocop is great. The sequels are are good too. Well, the second one is. The third one's all right. And I have I finally saw the remake, but I wasn't too thrilled with much of it though. But it was okay though. So anyway, the original Robocop is number three. Number two is. Superman 2 from 1980, well, 1980 was actually when it came out to England, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that because it didn't come to the U.S. till the following year, but anyway, I made that my top movie of 1980, anyway, so, I love Superman 2, I did enjoy it just as much as the first movie, Christopher Reeve, once again great as the title character, and Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor, Margot Killer as Lois Lane. Uh, let's see. Uh, everybody was absolutely good. Uh, oh yeah, and our in the three escape Kryptonians, we get to see more of after they were banished to the Fam Zone. The first movie we had General Zod, who was played by Terrence Stamp, real good. Sarah Douglas as Ursa and Jack O'Halloran as Non. They were all absolutely real good. I absolutely have fun blast with Superman 2. It may have its moments, but I feel it had more ups than downs. But anyway, the battle with the villains in the Fortress of Solitude was absolutely great. Excuse me. But it's still fun, though.
So Superman 2 is number two, and my number one favorite movie, well, number one favorite superhero movie, sorry, my, my apologies, my number one favorite superhero movie of the 1980s is Batman from 1989, which, of course, I have reviewed that movie, and it seems it did pretty well. But anyway, I figured that was probably a better choice. Batman was a good movie. Uh, Tim Burton, who directed, did a good job. Danny Elfman, who did the music, was absolutely great. Uh, the songs that were contributed by Prince, that was real good. Uh, I like the performances we got. Michael Keaton as Batman and Bruce Wayne. Uh, let's see, huh? Of course, we had. Sorry, this this thing. Kim Basinger as Vicky Vale, absolutely great actress in that role. Uh, Robert Wool, who would later go on to play TV's Arliss, as well. This big shot reporter works for the same magazine that uh, Vicky Vale works for. Forgot his name though, unfortunately. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I recently saw him make a cameo in the, well, one of the recent, one of the first three parts of the Crisis on Infinite Earths, well, big series event, which will resume early next year on the CW. That was pretty cool. And of course, Jack Nicholson as Jack Napier, aka Joker. Because I like how he kills his old boss as he comes up. And he's telling him, maybe we can work out a deal. Like, you know, it's like, calls him Jack, but he's like, Jack. Jack is dead, my friend. You can call me Joker. And as you can see, I'm a lot happier. <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> Just laughing hard the way he moves when he shoots that guy down. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, Batman is an absolutely fun movie. I love it. Uh, it's one of the good Batman movies. I, I really do think that's good. So Batman from 1989 is my top favorite superhero movie of the 1980s. I will try and do a 1990s one. I just got to try and get things adjusted for that. So maybe I'll do that tomorrow. But that's all the vids I'm doing for today. No more after this, maybe. I was going to do my review of Spies in the Sky, so, but that's going to be on. That will come up maybe I think I'll do that tomorrow. We'll see. So, anyway. Thank you for watching this. Now, if you've seen any of these movies, if you have a favorite superhero movie from the 1980s, or if it's Batman or Superman 2 or whatever, just tell me what it is in the comment section, please. Like and subscribe to my channel and be a part of the Big D Nation. Anyway, now, one more thing, heads up, remember, I got QA, and a which will be coming up next weekend, if I can get more questions. I've gotten a few, a little bit more, but I still would like some, a little more. If, now, remember, if you can't make it by the deadline on New Year's Eve, no problem. I will give y'all until f this Friday to give me some questions. It can be on... Movies, TV, music, video games, etc. Okay, and your and the question limit is five or less. Okay, so that's it. That's all I'm gonna say. Thank you again for watching. Now, I would like to show some stuff. Uh, anyway, I'll just put down the links to. Well, my last couple vids. I'm. Just the last two. I'm going to put in this corner. You can see my 2011 Flix ranking. And up there is my 2012 Flix ranking. Uh, so, I do hope you enjoy those, which I just now did. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. And also click on the icon to go to my channel and subscribe. So, until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.